Aloha my kako, a co-minor curtain call, a program of reviews and previews of the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I am Paul James Brown. The latest exhibit to open at the Hui Noyao Visual Arts Center on Baldwin Avenue in Makawa is Malama Vawakua, which means care for the realm of the gods. This show marks the fifth time the Hui has collaborated with the East Maui Watershed Partnership to present native and endemic flora and fauna in a juried exhibition. This is a unique exhibit because besides the excellence of the works of, as art, it is also juried with, for the accuracy of the depiction of the native or endemic species being portrayed. To that end, there is a juror who represents each of the categories. This year, the jurors were the legendary Maui environmentalist Bob Hobdi, who over a 40-year career with DLNR was responsible for discovering 12 indigenous species of plants so you can be sure that the flora and fauna pass muster. On the art side, Joe L.C., one of the founders and current art director as well as curator of Viewpoints Gallery. A fine artist herself, Ms. C., has been in charge of hanging some of the best art Maui's in memory over the last decade. The other aspect that separates this show from the others is it has categories for elementary, middle, and high school students as well as adults. This year, for the first time, seven artists were invited into the show, in addition to those who entered. They were Emiliana Archival, Tom Calhoun, Julia Malia Cordy, Bob Flint, Kirk Kurakawa, Christy Vale, Roberta Ann Weisenberg. In addition, 73 adults, 22 high school, 17 middle school, and seven elementary school students were accepted and presented 139 works of art in every media, including video. Each juror gets a juror's choice and honorable mention, and there are three special awards, one for conservation at work, conservation professional, and rarest find, and there is a top prize for each school category. Joe L.C. selected Rebecca Lewis's Nene with Attitude, a top of cloth and reed encaustic that definitely captured the more aggressive side of the state bird. Mr. Hobdy chose Susanna L. Cromwell's Puakala and Prickly Poppy. The artist shows four stages of the Puakala, which is a traditional Hawaiian healer, but listed as poisonous in botanical books, depicted are bud, bloom, pregnant pod, and post-seeded pod. Ms. C's honorable mention went to Julia Malia Cordy's hot sculpted glass copper on koa wood stand, Miley Lay, a delicate and thoroughly lovely piece. She captured the majesty of the Miley Lay in miniature. Mr. Hodby's went to Frank B. Shaner for this acrylic on wood panel painting of the Halima'u Trail, entitled Into the Wilderness. Mr. Shaner's work includes a pu'eo, Hawaiian owl, and a hinahina, haleakala, the endemic silver sword. Mr. Shaner chose to present the crater on an overcast and rainy day, a most interesting choice. The Conservation at Work Award was given for this dramatic photo of Maui Forest Bird Recovery's Chris Warren escorting Kanesa Duncan of the TV series Voice of the Sea by Brian Berkowitz, entitled, quote, It's the People. It's a wonderful editorial photo on metal that really makes it pop. The Conservation Professional Prize went to Zach Pazillo for his photo of the three stages of the ma'o, the Hawaiian cotton plant. Jody Arthur's Ke'ana was awarded the rarest fine prize. Her pin to the extinct Maui Vespers bat was an exceptionally well-executed and thought-out collaborative work consisting of a fold-out box with three trays. One has woodblock prints, another a cutout of the creature, and finally, a marvelous fold-out story. Ms. Arthur's name is on the work as the designer and printer, but she had help Laurel Nakanishi wrote the text where we find out bones from this bat, which has been extinct for more than two millennia, were discovered in a cave right here on Maui in 1981. Here we see those bones depicted in woodblock prints by Ms. Arthur. In one of the trays, she has a paper cutout of the creature made from handmade paper pulled in Honolulu by Allison Roscoe. This is number five in an edition of only 10. Viewers are encouraged to handle it and let it tell its own story. It is without doubt one of the most exciting works in the show and one that will teach you about a heretofore unknown species.
The student categories were equally exciting. It is wonderful to see the skill, excellence, and curiosity exhibited by these youth in response to the show's call. In the high school category, the jurors chose Skylar Masuda's Apanapana 1 by Solution, a print collage. This lovely color pencil depiction of our most endangered endemic bird species, the Kiwi Kiu, was done by middle schooler Jacqueline Nguyen, and finally this green sea turtle in colored pencil, entitled Lucky Turtle by Tosh Albert, garnered the elementary school prize. The State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, for which I was one of the three visual arts consultants, along with Dick Nelson and Michael Takimoto, selected five works to join the state's collection. We all loved Wendy Romanchik's oil on canvas of a green sword, a member of the silver sword family that can only be found at Pu'ukukui, one of the wettest places on the planet, with an average annual rainfall of about 386 inches. It is a member of an alliance of similar plants that became over 50 species evolving to adapt to various habitats. Her unique technique, coupled with the rarity of the plant, made this one a winner for all of us. Another work we recommended for purchase was Marianne Lee's ceramic impression of Lao Lu, the fan palm. Entitled Architecture Lao Lu Style, Ms. Lee creates ceramics that look like they are made from metal. This is one of the few non-realistic works in the show. Coming into the main gallery, Jeanette Hablowitz's diptych Walking Through Clouds jumped off the wall. This is a photographic monoprint mixed media on wood. Ms. Hablowitz has presented the heather and ferns in an unusual way that heightens the artistic nature of the work while still honoring the theme of this show. We decided the final work was actually going to be two. Amy Justin did these two ink paintings of the Hawaiian crow, the alala. One is called fruiting, the other flowering. We all felt this was really a diptych, not two separate works of art. So we all recommended the purchase and display of the works as one. Donna Zarbin Byrne created this elegant tribute to the koa. It's hard to believe this is metal. It almost floats on the wall. It's a magnificent work. Another take on the alala was created by Christine Turnbull. This high fire ceramic has the bird in an unusual pose. Miss Turnbull's work is always excellent. Kirk Kurokawa has been working on a huge mural at the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center. So where did he find time to create this oil on board of the Scarlet Eevee, one of our native species? Mr. Kurokawa has captured the honey creeper in flight. Although he is a photorealist, his paintings, like Wyeth, Rockwell, and Hopper, have a mystery about them which makes them stand out. Surprisingly, in a show about endangered species, there were only a few overtly political statements. One came from an artist who goes by Kalani the Bat. His work, Ope Ape A On Hai, is in a laser engraved birch with acrylic paint. The Hawaiian hoary bat is a native species in distress because the wind farms are seeking to increase the number of allowable fatalities to 377. Engraved into the flag are silhouettes of one of the only native Hawaiian land mammal. The flag is depicted upside down as the international signal of distress. Another overtly political statement that is like a contemporary tip of the hat to pop art icon Andy Warhol is middle schooler Kepa Cabanas's HHB, Hawaiian Hori Bat, Bug Control. Here, the artist has taken a spray can and created an alternative label that has much information about this endangered species. Malama Vawakua will be on exhibit at the Hui Noyao Visual Arts Center, 2841 Baldwin Avenue, Makawao, daily, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. until November 2nd. I have only scratched the surface. There is so much more to see and appreciate and learn from. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Next week, I'll have a review of Maui on Stage's season opener, The Graduate. Thanks for tuning in to Curtain Call. I'm Paul James Brown. Ahui ho!